Hi, I'm Amberly. Welcome back to Real Florida Magazine. Welcome back. Still here at the Washington County Ag Center in uh, Chipley, Florida, here this year for the Florida Beekeepers Co Convention. As I pointed out earlier, sort of a momentous uh, occasion. Uh, been a many years since the uh, convention has been held here in the Panhandle, uh, hosted this year by the Central Panhandle Beekeepers Association. Um, we've had the fortune of working with them. Here with me now is actually uh, Peaches, um, and I'm not going to ask anything more than that. What is your real name, Peaches? Ernest Peach. Oh, so you, you do have the uh, uh, fruit in your name. Um, but you prefer to call me, you, for me to call you Peaches? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Peaches is here as part of this year's convention. Uh, we were just outside. We got some uh, uh, conversation with some of the people associated with the Master Beekeepers program. Peaches, um, this is a pretty cool event. Um, great people. So far, we've met some really interesting folks. But on a very serious side of, of what you guys do, um, beekeeping due in large part to um, our food supply. And uh, there's some negative press right now about the effect um, uh, of various uh, uh, things on bees. And uh, we've got f images coming out of uh, Southeast Asia of women on ladders hand pollinating fruits uh, in trees and that sort of thing. What are we seeing right now? What is the reality in the United States um, as far as bees and beekeeping? Um, do we have a, a, a bad situation or are we just looking ahead to avoid it? What, what are we actually experiencing right now? Right now, we're, we're not having the CCD that we did have. Uh, it's still out there and we still don't know what is causing it. But uh, the uh, loss of the bees has been minimized so far. One of the reasons is we're getting more beekeepers in, uh, new beekeepers, and they are getting their bees, so therefore we're adding more bees to our overall uh, group. Uh, as far as uh, the pollination goes, it is still going on. It may be uh, four or five people get together and, and take their bees to some place and pollinate the watermelons, cantaloupe, stuff like that. Right now, uh, we have about three times as many beekeepers as we've ever had in the state of Florida. Wow. Wow. How long have you been messing with bees? About 20 years. Okay. You were pointing out the patches on your jacket there. You have gone through the ranks, as you put it. Uh, currently a master beekeeper. What comes after that? Master craftsman. And that would put me just about this far below an entomologist, but they still won't let me put doctor behind my name. Um, we, again, uh, having the fortune of working with the Central Panhandle uh, Beekeepers Association, uh, we produced their program for this, and by default I learned a lot about bees just in that process. And we're finding that the, this craft, um, this industry, attracts a lot of interesting people. Um, it's probably not for everybody, um, and those that seem to get into it, either by default already are interesting people or become that way through the, through the uh, 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 dissemination of the information and, uh, and just being involved in all that beekeeping. Do you find that that's true? And, and uh, am, am I on target there? Do you find that there are a lot of characters in this business? Oh yeah, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have people that's barely getting by, but their honey is what's keeping them alive. Uh, we have uh, uh, businessmen, we have farmers, we have ranchers, we have uh, Joe Blow that just, he's just around and he's got plenty of uh, time to work with bees. So we, ha we have a whole variety of different types of people in this group. And the only reason is they all like bees. Through the production of that uh, program, um, learned a little something about the, uh, the uh, Honey Association and uh, the, the Welch uh, Honey uh, uh, Contests or, or mm -hmm. judging. Um, these people are really serious about what they do. Uh, found that it was extremely uh, demanding, uh, lots of really stringent rules and regulations to follow were you to enter that competition. 
Why do you suppose that is? Um, obviously, you want the cream to rise and you want the, the best people to get the, the recognition for it, but uh, it seemed to be inordinately demanding, and, and, and I was interested by that. Well, the Welch Honey Show is uh, started in Ireland or wherever Welch is, uh, Wales perhaps. I'm not even for sure. I'm not a honey judge, but uh, they are noted worldwide for their judges. And people all over the world will fly their judges wherever to have a judging contest. Anybody that makes a blue ribbon or a red ribbon or a green ribbon or a white ribbon in the Welch Honey Show has got something to brag about. And uh, I know a fella that's uh, had the uh, first place in uh, creamed honey for the last eight years in the Welch Honey Show. And he brags that all the way up. Uh, the only thing that he's going to miss is whenever I decide to enter mine. <laughs> Is there any money in it? Uh, I know that there's bragging rights, but does it does it translate to dollars and revenue? Or yes, it? yes. Whenever you've got your honey out there on the, the bench and you're selling it at a, a, a fair or a festival or something like that, and you've got your red and blue ribbons out there, you say, look, this is the best stuff for the last eight years at the Welch Honey Show. It will sell. I mean, it sells good. Uh, if I had uh, combed honey and I got a, a blue ribbon for that, I couldn't keep hun uh, combed honey in my coffers because everybody wants some of it. Interesting. Um, I hope to learn more about the industry throughout this weekend. We plan on spending uh, quite a few hours here and talking to other folks um, such as yourself. What's the best part about being involved with bees? <laughs> I don't know the whole thing, I guess. Uh, I like bees. I like uh, the money that uh, they bring in, either through pollination or the honey or, or selling the wax or even the propolis. Everything about the bees makes money if you want to use it as a business. If you want to use it as a uh, hobby, like all hobbies, you can spend the heck out of your money and not make any. But if you use it as a business, treat it like a business, you'll make money. I mean, you can't help it. What's the most challenging part of being a beekeeper? Staying up with the times. Uh, we have predators now that uh, we didn't have 45 years ago. Now, 40, about 45 years ago, I got my first uh, hives and I stacked all my boxes, my four deep brood boxes, and all my honey supers up. I even had to use two before to keep them from falling over. Left them there six months, I came back, and I had all kinds of honey, all kinds of bees, and no worries. But since the 60s and 70s and the 90s, we started having all kinds of little predators coming in and now we have to work to keep our bees alive. There is no wild bees anymore up here because of the predators that have decimated them. Now we still have wild bees down at the uh, uh, southern end of the state because of the Africanized honeybees. And if you find a, a, a feral colony out there, you know they're Africanized. Up here, we don't have the feral. And that's what the farmers are getting all bent out of shape because I used to have bees all over the place. Even whenever I had some to come in, I still had bees. Not anymore. So that's that's one of the the hard things about it is we have predators that we have to combat all the time and help the bees stay alive. When you talk about predators, I know that just relatively recently the state of Florida has made it a um, a, a felony to um, steal uh, someone's beehive. And uh, would, would those humans be considered part of that uh, predation problem that you're referring to? That's part of it, yes. Uh, if somebody stole a tractor, the state would be all over them trying to find them. Somebody steals a, a hive of uh, bees, now you're stealing somebody's livelihood. 
bees are considered uh, animals and they're farm animals and a beekeeper is a, a farmer so therefore you steal his bees you stole part of his farm and that's tough now we, we we're, st we're still combating that but it's not as bad now as it was since we did catch several of them and almost hung them peaches thanks so much for taking the time um, we look forward to this weekend. Uh, if we uh, have the opportunity, maybe we can revisit with you before the weekend is over and sort of maybe right. get some of your thoughts about how the weekend is going. Um, but uh, it was a pleasure to meet you, and, and thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. Well, I appreciate you uh, bringing me on the air, and I enjoy talking to you. Here right now with uh, Ernest Peach uh, from Pensacola, part of this year's uh, Florida Beekeepers Convention here in Chipley, Florida, hosted by the Central Panhandle Beekeepers Association. Uh, don't you know it took me a while to be able to say that all in one line without, <laughs> without bobbling it. Um, we're going to have some fun this weekend. Um, if, if nothing else, bees are certainly interesting. Um, they're, uh, they're very uh, mysterious in a lot of ways. People don't usually get close to bees, so we're going to be learning a lot ourselves, and hopefully by that process you will too. We'll be right back.